Hi, this is Charles Benoit from ReggaeSteadySka.com, your source worldwide for all things reggae, ska, and rock steady. Today, we are really honored to be talking to a true legend in ska and reggae and rock steady music, Dandy Livingston. Dandy, welcome to the show. How is uh, things down in Jamaica way? Well, it's not too bad. It stopped raining. It's been raining the last couple of weeks, but the last five, four or five days, we have had sunshine. It looks like a postcard again, I bet. Yeah, it does. I, I want to talk to you about your, your new album, Legends, but before I get to that, I have to, of course, talk a little bit about your very storied and long career. But you're recording since the age of 21, and you've released dozens and dozens of singles, and, and by my count, about 15 or 16 albums. So you've been a very busy man whose career has crossed every aspect of what we do on this show, reggae, rock steady, and, of course, ska. Well... I love music. <laughs> it's an understatement, right? <laughs> right. So, okay, music is my life, right? I started in music business in 1967. Actually, it was 1964, to be exact. That's after I left school, right? I did my tool making thing and thing and thing and thing. My first record was What a Life on the Carnival record label. I spent about 18 months with those people. No, about 15 months, to be exact. Then I went to Rita King's R&B label, Scabby. That's where I did a message to Rudy, Rudy, a message to you, in 1967 summer, the summer of 1967. Everybody knows Rudy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> label and uh, I spent about 18 months to be exact with Rita King Lee Gopal the the late Lee Gopal as you know uh, started his own thing in 68 right, well, well I knew Lee from way back from 64 he was doing this mail order thing you know so I used to sell records for him weekend time and I got this phone call uh that he was starting up his own thing. I should check him out, which I did. And uh, yeah, I got into Trojan from 1968. I, I have to ask, I have to go back and ask a question before we jump way ahead. Mm -hmm. we, I've always heard this story that you, uh -huh. wrote, that you wrote the lyrics to Rudy, a message to you on your way to the recording studio. Well, <laughs> it was the day before actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a day before, or probably two days before, because I remember saying to I remember saying to Rita King, right? I've got this idea, Rita, uh, and I'd love to get into the studio and do it. And she said, "Danny, go ahead, all right? Go ahead and do it, right?" I went in, a simple song, you know. It took about 15, 20 minutes to record. Four musicians. We did the rhythm first, right? And then about a week after, I. Overdub the horns. Uh, use Rico Rodriguez and a guy called Pepsi and Tennis Socks. Sex. Yeah, so overall, the old thing from start to finish, I would say <laughs> maybe maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> that's amazing because that's probably the most that's probably the most influential hour and a half music in all of Ska in all of Jamaican music. Yeah. Susan Beware the Devil from nineteen seventy two, that had to take longer than an hour and a half. Well, Susan, the story behind Susan, I did Susan three times. I wasn't happy with the first two, two recordings. And I came out to Jamaica, Jamaica in, in, in 70, what, 71. And I redid it all over again. And it worked. Third time lucky. I don't know what's going on. You know the girl I used to know. You're turning my world upside down, branding me with a frown. Hey, hey. Susan, beware of the devil. Don't let him spoil your heart. Susan, beware of the devil. Don't let him put us apart. See, 
over your career, as I said, you released dozens of singles, and you were the producer on far more than that. I mean, you are. Numerous recordings, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to say it, it's it, it's got a label up and towards the hundreds for the number of things that you had your hand in one way or the other, which leads us to your new album, which has the title, which truly fits, Legends. Tell us a little bit about this album, why it came about now. It's been a while since you've released new music, so what was it about <laughs> this music, this album, and why you wanted to release it now? Well, I came back home to Jamaica in 1983, yeah, with my family, right? And um, we started our own business. And after a while, I got bored, you know, um, because my wife and daughter was, you know, dealing with things, right? So music is, is in the blood, eh? So <laughs> I decided to just start writing some songs. I, I, I had all these ideas in my head anyway. But it, it, it was just a matter of putting them down on tape, yeah? So I started to record, I would record three, two or three songs this week. Then maybe come January, I'll record another two or three. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Put them on the shelf, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so they began to pile up all the ideas in my head and, and the material on the shelf, right? This spanned over 15 years. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah. And one day... I just got up and said, look, I'm going to finish an album. And that's what I did. There was an album b before Legend, which came out in 2014. That was the first album after uh, 40 years. Then Legend came about in, what, uh, 10, maybe a year ago. Right. I did a single first. I did a single first. Right. It was Legend. I did a single. And I just had this idea you know, to do another album because the materials were all piling up again. <laughs> and so I, I, I compiled the album. You wrote uh, 12 of the 14 songs on there. You do a, a couple covers, uh, Monkey Spanner and... Uh, Double Barrel, right? Double Barrel. I've got to give a shout out to Paul Henton, who on mm -hmm. your liner notes, you had him playing piano, guitar, yeah. organ, bass, melodica, and drums. Uh, yeah, I pushed him. I pushed him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Paul. Paul Paul is a great musician, you know. He, 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 he's great. I don't know how he puts up with me, you know, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> because, as I said, um, he, he, at first, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, I've never done this for anybody before, you know, Then, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Meaning, meaning, uh, doing so much work, albeit he was getting paid. But you know, after a while, after three, four, five sessions, he got right into my groove, which was great, obviously. And he told me this personally. He said he called me Sir D, Sir D, right? He doesn't say Danny. He says Sir D. He says Sir D. I must let you know this, right? I love working with you, right? And that's it. We have a good relationship. That's, that makes a lot of difference. It makes a lot of difference. Let's talk about some of the songs on that. Obviously, the first song, Legends, yeah. which you released as a single. You, you rightly put yourself and other musicians on the throne, and you have a great video that goes with that. How did you get that right. together? I, I I just decided to do a video. You know, um, it made sense at, at the time, and still makes sense, right? I've never done, believe me, I've never done a video before all my life, never. The, 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 I, the, the only time I came in, in, in that medium was uh, way back in the 70s when I did, uh, when I had the puppets in, the, uh, you know, the, I did Top of the Pops in, uh, right. in, um, in England. 
That was only two times, right? Or three times that I appeared on that sort of medium. So I just decided, never did a video of my own at all. Never. So I just decided, why not? At this time of my life, you know, old boy and thing, <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I did the video and it went down pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. It gives, it gives a great shot of some, uh, let's say, um, vintage musicians, uh, yeah. uh, gentlemen oh. of a certain age. Uh, <laughs> it's, good, it's good to see people my age, because yeah. I'm about the same age, playing and, and being involved in making the music. That was a lot of fun. Also, yeah. speaking of another great legend, you brought in you, Roy, for a couple That's of right. times, including right. standing yeah. up yeah. for the rhythm, standing up yeah. for the rhythm, which I, I think is is pretty much what you've been doing and what you're doing that's, now with this album, standing up for the that's, rhythm. That's right. That's right. You that's, give some name checks to the king, the prince, the duke. <laughs> tell us a little, yeah, right. tell us a little yeah. bit about that song. Yeah, I went way back. I went way back. So, as you know, those were all the sound system names, you know, the the Prince Buster, the Duke Reed, and uh, name him, right? That, that was the old thing. I was bigging him up, so to speak. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. that was that was a lot of fun, and you also you chose to do a remake of. So I guess this is the fourth version of Susan Beware the Devil. Fourth uh, version. Just because you felt like just bringing a, bringing a new fresh take to it. Well, actually, it's the it's a, it's, a, it's a second version that's been released, done it because the first two they didn't come out at all. The, the one in 71, 72, that was the first Susan Bear of the Devil, you know, that went out on the street. And now this new version yeah, on the album. If you say you want me next to you, I don't know what's going on. You're not the girl I used to know. You're turning my world upside down, branding me with a frown. Hey, hey. Susan Bear of the Devil. What do you think of it? I have so many memories of the original <laughs> Susan song that it's kind of hard to, to yeah, pick, I know. you know, as so I have great memories with that. But then I hear this one and go, yeah, well, I like the production quality. Yeah, so yeah, there's there's yeah. something to there. Well, the original, the original, original, as you know, is always original. Right? You can't beat original. <laughs> Your version of Double Barrel, I really like what you you and your team did with that. That was a lot of fun as well. Yeah, well, I thought I would, you know, I thought I would make a difference doing it in a ska version. You know, I, I would never attempt to do it uh, like the original. It, 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 it wouldn't make sense to me, you know what I mean? So I did it in a ska version. independent girl as a songwriter and i'm always writing songs as i said to you early on right and in independent girl I, I rate it as one of my one of my best songs i love it you know what I mean? <laughs> so um again it was sparked for about four or five years on the shelf right so i said to myself hey it's a good song why not put it on, on, on the album you know and that's what i did
I don't like the word retire, <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Again, like I said before, right now I'm working on a new album because there's still things in my head that I need to get out. Yeah, I, I just make music. I'm just making music. Nothing else to do, you know. I'm just making music. Well, that's very inspiration. I'll tell you, <laughs> the fact that. You've been in the industry, as you said, for five decades, and you're currently working on a new album. I'm yeah. Very impressive. Dandy, it has been a honor and a privilege to chat with you. I know you have a tea time coming up soon. Yeah, in my sunny tea. Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, my tea time, I think, is one, one o'clock. <laughs> well, I will, uh, I will let you go prepare for it. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I truly really appreciate it. Friends, you've been listening to an interview with the one and only legend, Dandy Livingston, for ReggaeCitySky.com. I'm Charles Benoit. Thank you again, sir. You're welcome. Bye-bye.